We are built for for the star, not the Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good night, depending on where you are, that's appropriate. This is your man, HRAP coming at you live and direct. Uh, this is the End of the Bench podcast on Built for This Network. I have a lot on my plate. It's not going to take a long time to get it off my plate. I'm going to empty my plate because I got things to do. I got things to do, things to do. Thank you for tuning in. As usual, this is the end of the bench. I am HRB. This is a podcast. We're coming at you live both on Spreaker.com on Bill for this network as well as on YouTube. The end of the bench podcast, build and destroy what we build all build up the community and everybody in it and destroy all the lies and propaganda that is around the community. Thank you for tuning in. I got sister Naisha Buckley, my brother Kev, Rated Kev in the building. That's my double brother, Raider brother, and my brother brother. An important brother. So I want you to understand that this is the first broadcast in my new studio. Maybe a little sound discrepancy. We don't work on that. But it is Pumpy Studio. Pumpy Studio, we in the building. As usual, we trying to bring it to you and give it to you and give you everything you need in the event that you're unable to watch right now. In the event, in the event that you're unable to watch right now, go to Spreaker.com, subscribe to Bill for this network. And you'll get it or go to YouTube, Bill for this network, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Aha Radio, Google Podcasts, Castbox, Deezer, or Podcast Addict. Or if you're looking at it on YouTube, you already know what to do. Hit that like button, 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 and subscribe. And then it's a little bell right there. It's a notification bell. So you'll know anytime I launch a show, if I do one all willy nilly, and then you'll be able to get it and tune in. Thank you for tuning in. I got my man, my man, Big Chief in the building. Much love. Thank you for tuning in. And as you all know, I acknowledge my family, both my ancestors and my living family. That is everybody connected to the Paula Turner, Battle Cotton, Harper, Bailey, Chris Lansdowne, Liggins, Duncan, and anybody who knows me knows me, my mother, my my brothers, my sisters, my nieces, nephews, cousins, and anybody else, grandparents. We are the Williams clan. We are in the building. Thank you for tuning in. Now. This is an interesting, interesting, interesting time. It is an interesting time. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. We have a lot going on. I'm going to, uh, I got my man DJ Mad Knox in the building, brother on Bill for this network. It's interesting. I got my main man, Big Illinois, in the building. Thank you for tuning in, man. Thank you. I hit that like button. Please hit that like button. Like, 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 like. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Notification bell, notification bell, notification bell. It is important. Now, 
As you all know, if you've been listening to the show, I used to be big time, big time sports fan. I'm gonna do a little sports, I'm gonna do a little commentary today, but I'm all I'm all but retired from talking about sports. You won't see me talk about sports with my friends. You don't see me talk about sports on air. You won't ever see me talk about definitely sports sports on air. Because it's not beneficial. It's not going to help me get free. So I ain't doing it no more. But for those who still love sports, I commend you. Much love, man. Use that as an escape. I got my man RC in the building. Much love. Thank you for the support. Keep using it as an escape. I just can't anymore. And I'm not knocking anybody who can. But I don't do it anymore. It was a good 40-year run, and I'm just done. You know what I mean? I watch every once in a while, but I don't watch a lot. But when I was watching the uh, news in the last few weeks, I noticed that anytime people that look like me or people who are deemed minorities, we're part of the, uh, the global majority, actually. And uh, shout out to Karen Hunter for that one. That's not, that's not your man. But... Um, Everybody who's part of the global majority, if they want to do something in sports, it's always an obstacle to jump over. Latino brothers, they boogie when they play baseball. They get out, they get the crowd riled up. See how we live in a capitalist society. If you get the crowd involved, why not? But let's not. That's neither here nor there. I'm not even going to go there. But it's always an issue. You know, you, you know, uh, our brother Charlie Ward was unable to uh, play NFL football, which was his dream. He had to go to the NBA, probably save his body a whole lot of nonsense. But it was one of those situations to where as uh, it was like uh, 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 we, we uh, um, he was unable to play in the National Football League and because they wanted him to pick a side. And I'm looking at TV for the last six years, almost 10 years, maybe even eight years. I watched this guy by the name of Tim Tito, Tebow, who's a mediocre athlete at his best. Uh, they overhype him. They, they put way too much fervor behind this guy, you know, and they make it seem as if he's the American dream. And now Tim Tebow is back in the National Football League. I understand that you have to make the team. This is Tim Tebow's college coach. And he's talking, they're talking about Tim Tebow being a leader. How can you be a leader and a mediocre ball player? You no, know, I'm going to talk about this a little later. My brother Kwame Brown has been spraying shots all over the Internet this week. And. Kwame was a mediocre ball player. And do you think Kwame Brown get a chance to be a major league baseball player? You think Kwame Brown, Charlie Wood couldn't even play, let them pick him in a decent spot so he could go to football, that he had to go to basketball. But Tim Tebow is like, he like one of those make-a-wish kids, those special needs kids, or one of those kids that has a serious illness. He, all I want to do, shout out to Wanga Williams in the building. Much more, much love, little bro. Uh, my man Ivan, big dog in the building. Much love, brother. Um, see, he's like one of those make-a-wish kids. Oh, I want to be a baseball. I want to be a quarterback. And they made him a quarterback, even though he's insane and mediocre. Oh, I want to be a baseball player. <laughs> the Mets, we got a slots for you. Oh, I want to be a TV analyst. Oh, come on. ESPN, the biggest network in the world, uh, pr uh, promoting the biggest sports in the world. And now he wants to be an NFL player again, and they're giving him a shot to play a position that he's never played in his life. And, yeah, and if anybody ever wonders, man, rap, what made you start watching sports? This type of stuff. You know, they, they created this fictitious word called meritocracy, and it's supposed to mean if you're good enough, you can make it. That's that's the greatest lie in the history of the world when it comes to anything in America, as well as especially sports, because every time every time we turn a sporting event, we hear the story of we didn't know who this guy was. And he jumped out of the ground and and look at him. He's an NBA all star. Albert Pujols, one of the best hitters in the history of baseball. They didn't know who he was. What happened to meritocracy? So because if it was really meritocracy. The HBCUs, the the, uh, uh, the WAC conference, the uh, the Big Twelve, and all these conferences will have more ball players in these leagues. But it's not; it's the dude who has the most connections to the right people, and then you make it. So again, this is one of the things that makes me hate sports today. This is one of the things that made me turn off the TV. This is one of the things that made me not participate. Because when you don't participate. They're forced to play your game. 
And I understand, man, it's one HYB on one Bill for This Network and one YouTube channel. Or two YouTube channels because it's on Bill for This Network's channel and this one. On two YouTube channels, is that going to make a difference? No. But I ain't for this, man. I'm telling you, this is why, you know, look, Dame Lillard. Uh, hell, Baron Davis, believe it or not, Baron Davis, even though by the time he was a senior high school, he was the all-time man. But he wasn't even the man early in his career. So stop telling me about all these guys. Joe Dumas, Carl Malone. We can go chapter, book, and verse in regards to people who get their way. And then you got people. What does this have to do with what I traditionally talk to on my Saturday, talk about on my Saturday show? Everything. Because this is a perfect example of white privilege. You know, Tim Tebow is the all-American boy. He was a virgin until he got married. Uh he, he don't he don't use profanity. He loves Jesus. He prays if he kneels and prays before games. This is exactly what we want our kids to be. But this is a fictitious version of what we want our kids to be. Because what they'll do is build this as Tim Tebow is such a hard worker that he was able to play minor league baseball. Are you telling me we can't find any of these young Latino brothers, these young brother brothers, these young Asian brothers? To play in, in 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 major league baseball or minor league system and come up and be the man. Seeing how you just happen to hear Tebow at a junior college doing batting practice. See, they're not putting money into it. But when it's these white guys, they want to pretend that this is just hard work and dedication. Tim Tebow again at the quarterback position in which he was the Heisman Trophy winner in college. They want to make him out to be one of the greatest top three greatest college players ever. And I can name three people around oh, two of them on his damn team that he wasn't, he wasn't better than. But it's just insane, man. And you wonder why you got people like myself and other people who do the kind of rhetoric, speak the kind of rhetoric that I speak. They're out here going, what the hell is going on? But, hey, man, it is what it is. Y'all don't want to believe it. Y'all want to act like it's fake. But here will here go another brother complaining. You damn right I'm complaining. Because guess what? Again, as I'm going to speak to later, you got brothers like the young brother Kwame Brown sitting around walk, living near garbage can outside, walking to school with no shoes on his feet. And and no, it's how many people down there not getting that same opportunity? But we're going to talk about America. Talk, see, man, y'all can miss me with that nonsense. Y'all could miss me with that nonsense because it's not real. And I'm not I'm not gonna know I'm no longer gonna pretend that it's real. Well, you know, it's that's just your opinion. You know what? Opinions are only valid if they're backed by facts. You have to be able to look at situation A, look at situation B, C D E F G L M N O P Q R X T U V, look at that, inculcate it in your mind, make it map it through your head, and then spit out something that is your opinion. But if it's not real, if it's just, hey, I think Holly Berry feasting. I've never been within 10,000 miles of Holly Berry. I probably have never been, unless she'd been in Chicago at one point and I was here at the same time. That's the closest I've ever been. I've never seen it in real life. But for me, to, and it's just my opinion. No, you don't get the chance to run your stupid opinions anymore because people like me, we're going to expose it. Period. You know, which leads me to another situation. We're dealing with these people who are running the government at this, at this point. Democratic Party, you can go jump in the lake. Republican Party, you can hold their hand as they jump in the lake. My people, we need to form our own party. We need to form our own political party. Right before Malcolm died, he had this world-famous speech called The Ballot or the Book. And he was encouraging people to uh, register to vote. I'm going to give you all an example. Why? Why? Why the Democratic Party is full of trash, caca, manure, feces, for the last three months, all we heard is the Republican Party is getting together and creating these racist bills so black people voter suppression, voter suppression, voter suppression, voter suppression. That's all we've heard for the last 90 days. Ever since the dudes stormed the Capitol, you know, and then they got us doing this little dance about if that was us, it would be enough if it was us. We know what time it is if it was us. So let's not talk about this. If you sit outside and it's raining, you're going to get wet. Let's stop talking about the obvious. Let's talk about proper solutions to these problems. So, Democratic Party, how many people have you seen on TV? How many commercials? How many how many state representatives? How many state senators? How many Congress people? How many anybody who's ever been elected in the Democratic Party have you seen on TV saying, make sure you register to vote? 
Why in the hell, if the if the midterms are next November, why in the hell are we not seeing commercials now? Why don't we have the LeBron Jameses, the Ice Cubes, the uh, the Beyonce's, the Jay Z's, and all these people who are on our face twenty four hours a day, seven days a week? Vote, 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 vote. Why ain't nobody saying register to vote? Hmm. Why ain't nobody there? Nobody saying register to vote. Oh, they're making it hard for our seniors to vote. Guess what? We got eighteen months to get them in play right now. Mm hmm. Eighteen months. Why ain't nobody talking about it? Because both parties are full of it. See, the thing is, one party pretends to be against us. The other party pretends to be for us. And at the end of the day, we get nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. See, but they're pretending to be our friends. Hey, Corey Booker, where you at, bro? Why you ain't on TV? Why you ain't on Bill Maher now? Why ain't you trying to figure out who the hell I am to get on my show? Uh, whoever took out Senator Harris's spot. Why ain't you on the TV? All you clowns and creeps. Only people doing it is people like Stacey Anson and the sister Tasha Brown and the brother who helped create Black Votes Matter. They doing it, but where the ads at? Democratic Party. Why aren't you putting money behind Black Votes Matter? So if this, if these laws have been created for voter suppression against me and my people, shout out to Shanae. My fault. I didn't know that was you. Salute. Appreciate you. Thank you for the support. Much love. Since I grew up, been friends with her before I had teen in my age, and I'm fifty. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, uh. Where the hell is the where, where the hell the money behind this? Because guess what? No matter what voter suppression laws y'all create, they create. All you have to do is get our sisters and brothers. Hey, our seniors will vote in a snowstorm. It could be snow this high. It's gonna be an older sister and an older brother shoveling their way to the polls. So how about this Democratic Party? Since they've set up situations to where as uh 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 our seniors they gonna suppress the vote. How about this? They they cut down early voting. How about this? Y'all create a GoFundMe page, or maybe I need to. Maybe I need to do it. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna look into. It. I'm gonna think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out how I can do it. We need. Maybe y'all know how to do it. Reach out to me at hrap underscore b on Instagram, Twitter, Brian D Williams on Facebook. Reach out to me uh, via Instant Message. We can come up man, via inbox or whatever. We can come up with it. But maybe we need to start a GoFundMe page and then. Give it to Stacey Abrams so Stacey Abrams could get our seniors in place so they can get IDs, voter IDs, and then they and, and come next November, they ready. See, everybody want to help. Don't help me at a quarter to 12 and the deadline is 12. Help me, goddamn it, Tuesday. And when the shit is, when, it's, when the deadline is Tuesday. Help me at 11.59 Tuesday. Because next week, I'm going to need you. Start helping me that day. Start helping me a month from Tuesday. A year from Tuesday. See, because they don't really have our backs. They don't really have our backs. Because these people are turning on each other like a pack of wild dogs. I was talking to this Trump supporter recently. Nice white lady. She was cool. And you know what? To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know if she's a Trump supporter. Because she just said, I know me and you are on the opposite sides. Of the, of the spectrum. So I just say, oh, you must be one of the Trump supporters, right? She might not have said, she just might have been a Republican white lady. Who gives a damn? She was nice, right? She was respectful. And me and her chopping it up. And she was like, see, a lot of people getting wrong information. And I, and I gave her the same information I've been telling y'all about. I said, oh, you watch too much TV. And she was like, what do you mean? And I said, because you think my people are biased. I said, let's just be real honest. You think my people are relatively violent. Well, sometimes I say you believe the stat this uh, in regards to black on black crime. She's like, it is pretty high. I said, OK, in order to call something bad, you must be able to compare it to something. Correct. And she said, yes. I said, cool. I'm glad you feel that way. OK. In order to call something bad, you must be able to compare it to something. What's the white on white crime statistic? She didn't know. I said, what's the Asian on Asian statistic? She didn't know. I said Latino on Latino. She didn't know. I said, so how do you know what my situation is bad? She is stone faced. I said, better yet. Why do you only know mine? I say, see, you thought people on my team was just being misinformed. Your ass is misinformed too. And this is why I say to hell with the Democratic Party and to hell with the Republican Party. Because they all full of it, man. They ain't rolling with us. They don't give a damn about us. If you get your ass up and go to work and you look like this, 
a little lighter, a little darker, or the same. Or in that area. If you if you got a Zulu related to you, or somebody from the continent related to you on the great, great, great side of the game, they don't give a damn about you. News flash. If you white and get your ass to go to work, they don't like you either. <laughs> but it's the easiest thing to do is to find somebody who you think you better than so you can feel better than yourself. Why you think the whole concept of hate, racism, discrimination is created? Because they want the people that's on the bottom right next to you to fight you. Crabs in the barrel, right? We, we good for saying that, making that statement. Crabs in the barrel, right? But guess what? Barrels aren't crabs' natural habitat. When you see crabs on the ocean, do they do you see just do you watch National Geographic? Look at the attack of the crabs. You don't see that. Because if you put somebody in a situation and it's a dire, dire situation, people reach out, lash out, and hurt each other. But y'all ass, y'all ass, don't y'all want to believe what C C H Rap brothers do need to stop that nonsense. We do need to stop killing each other. Man, knock it off. Knock it off. Black on black crime is not real. It's not real. Okay. I know a lot of people disagreeing with me right now, but here, I'm proof to you it's not real. Or, how about this? If you grew up in an impoverished situation, how many times would you just walk down the street somebody just beat the hell out of you? I don't mean a school situation where you got adolescents, ignorant ass adolescents acting a fool, picking and teasing, because that's natural. That's from the richest person in the world down to the poorest people. If you want to go to a, a boarding school with kids and they're picking on each other. If you want to go to an underfunded in a city school, people, white, black, Latino, people getting picked on. So we're not talking about that. But how can you mention black on black crime when you know if you have anything that resembles a history book in your lap, anything, we were herded into certain areas and not allowed to leave those areas. So if look at my neighborhood, me, Big Illinois, and Chanel grew up in the same neighborhood. If we went one block north of North Avenue, the police are screaming on us. What, what you doing over here? So how is it that you are supposed to get into it with another person living under those conditions? Oh, so you're just supposed to magically get out of this. So no. So another thing, crime. It ain't that many criminals in the world. Again, me, Chanel, and Big Illinois grew up in one of the most notorious housing developments in the United States of America, Brini Green. Uh, they used to call it housing projects, right? Okay, we grew up next door to the Cabrini Green housing projects, and even though it was impoverished, I can guarantee you, if Big Illinois is still in the chat room, if you would ask Big Illinois, anybody in the chat room would ask them, what were some of the best times of your life in Cabrini Green projects? What were some of the best times of my life in the Avalon Home and other housing projects? So, when Guess what? Because everybody knew each other. We on top of each other. Nobody had nothing. But the more we start buying into this nonsense, you got to have a big car. You got to have designer jeans. To show you how brainwashed the universe that I grew up in was, you had people in my community. Now, Levi's is one of the most popular jeans on earth. If you wore Levi's, you were less than. And you wore, if you wore Jabot jeans, $70 a pair, you were in the in crowd. We all living in poverty. Your dumb ass is spending extra money on clothes. But when you buy into that, it creates tension because you're, you're trying to strive to be equal. I got a question. These people who discriminate against us, these people who hate us, these people who do everything they can to destroy us. Who the hell are they to be equal to? When you answer, you're free to answer anytime you like. But this is what I'm talking about. These are the same people you're trying to strive to be equal to. My best friends, uh, let me see, my man RC said some. My best friends, family, uh, the, uh, uh, gardeners came from there. Exactly. Exactly. They moved to a whole other state and created another friend. So stop buying into this nonsense that we are in, in, inherently evil and criminal. Go to FBI.com. You will get your freaking mind blown at how little violence actually takes place in America. But when you have Fox News playing this one, a uh, man shot in Chicago on 63rd National. <coughs> MSNBC on 63rd Street in Chicago, man shot. On uh, CNN, 
uh, on the south side, a man was shot. You think it's three different stories. It's the same damn story. But if you're a Chicago, you're going to the same story. But guess what? We still fall for the nonsense, too. Because it's dangerous now. It wasn't like this. And when we grew up, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, newsflash, people. Uh, if you're older, if you're, if you're within five years of me, you remember a movie in 1988 called Colors. Colors was about the gang violence in Los Angeles. Because of the corrupt politicians in Chicago tra probably trying to fleece the people in Hollywood, they say it's gangs in L.A. We'll forget y'all. So how was they doing a gang movie in Chicago in the 80s? And, the, and uh, the violence wasn't that bad. Uh, here's another news flash. When I was 22 years old, it was 917 murders in the city of Chicago. When y'all start hearing about my city and all the nefarious activities and the gang banging and the murdering and the shooting, it was 450. 20-some odd years later, 450. That sounds like improvement. If you got 900 negatives and now you got 450 negatives, I don't know. I don't know. Sounds a little better to me, but we didn't have CNN, MSNBC, Fox, ABC, CBS, News, just news. Then you didn't have all these ancillary uh, uh, entities that your, your dumbass cousin and posted the same fight 35 times. You picking up people. Shout out to Teresa Rock in the building. Tiki in the building. Rock a pop. You didn't have all these dumbass people posting this stuff and making you think you were inundated around, you know, they were inundating you with violence and made you feel like this. People, in 2013, I looked this up, 2013, I understand it's seven years ago, but when you hear what I got to say, eight years ago, when you hear what I have to say, you'll understand where I'm coming from. 2013 was the last time I looked this up. 2013, 9.6% of the population was using drugs. 9.6, not 10%, quite. Uh, guess the other year I looked at 1977 19, no it's actually it's 1978 the other year I looked at was 1978 guess what it was then 9.3 so uh, I would argue it's still not 10% of the population so if you're always seeing people like me doing crime and you're always you, you, you affiliate my, us with drugs and crime it's only 10% of the population the entire population the Latinos the Asians, all former Asian, Vietnamese, Indian, Chinese, Japanese, hell, Russia is in Asia, uh, Japan, all those, even all those countries, that, those are the big name countries. These, I'm not talking, we, I didn't even cover countries that people don't, don't, don't uh, really affiliate with Asia. So, if out of all those people, all the people in Europe, all those people everywhere else, and only 10, less than 10% were using drugs, how is it that you affiliate my people with the drug trade. Huh? Huh? Please help me understand that. Because we are being brainwashed. Because this is the exact same thing Hitler stole from President Truman and President Roosevelt and took home and put it on the Jewish people. Now they put it on me and my people. So... If you want to continue to fall for this nonsense, go right ahead. But don't, 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 don't try to talk to me about it. Don't try to talk to me about it. Because see, when you fall for this stuff, you go down these YouTube rabbit holes and you go town. Oh, I read this video and I, I looked at the statistics. Statistics don't tell you. I keep telling y'all statistics like a bikini. It show a lot, but it don't show everything. In most cases, it don't show the most important stuff. And the statistic is something else I'm going to get on when I'm talking about my young brother, Kwame Brown. But these are the things that I'm talking about. They keep inundating you with erroneous statistic, bullshit information. Excuse my language. And guess what? Profanity is not a sin. Uh, to curse somebody in the Bible is I hope you die. I hope you get hit by a truck. That is a curse I'm putting on you. you like I said the other night, do you think God really get mad if somebody say MF? Stop. Oh, you lived a great life, but I heard you call the... Uh, Tom that drove past you pad too fast. He called you up and hit you call him an MF and you're going to hell. This is the type of stuff that I'm talking about. We must get away from being followers, stool pigeons, just horses with blinders on. We gotta stop. Back to these creeps in these parties that pretend to help us. Until I start seeing Democratic Party commercials. Helping my disenfranchised people all over this country with these voter suppression. You ain't got to change the laws. 
This is all you have to do. Brothers and sisters, maybe my man, because he be helping me out a lot. He be making a lot of dope suggestions. If y'all watch the forecast Tuesday, I mean Monday, uh, the brother Ray the Cab. No, no, watch this Monday. The brother Ray the Cab suggested this movie named Monster on Netflix. It's that good. I, I'm like, Dave Chappelle, I wish I had more thumbs. I can move, put more thumbs up. Check it out. You can come in with me and my man, Dalt, my man, Wilkes, and the captain, Ben from BS3. We kill it at Monday, as usual, socially, entertainment-wise, humor. We, we, we dope. But back to this. If y'all want to continue to buy into this nonsense and be brainwashed by a system that hates you, go right ahead. I don't have time for it anymore. I'm not for the smoke anymore. Democratic Party. Oh, Republican Party, Tea Party, Party at, at Aunt Crib, whatever the party you want to do, start helping my brothers and sisters get their finances. Or maybe we need to start a go for a national GoFundMe pay for so people who don't have the finances to get their IDs, their voter registration, and they voter IDs and they voter registration card. We need to get them on some buses and take them to the place, register them to vote, get their ID, send them back to the crib, and then we wait. Then we wait. Because I'm not for it no more. And if you don't believe, if you don't understand the severity of what's going on, you can think, oh, man, that voter stuff, because I don't I don't, I don't, don't really buy into it. I really don't buy into it. Until my grandson, who isn't born yet, or granddaughter, who isn't born yet, but I got some small nieces and nephews, until they get of age, or I got some cousins, until they get to the point where they want to get into politics, and then they run for office, then don't talk to me about it. I mean, I don't really have no faith in these people. But I got faith in some people that we grew up as a community because that's what we're going to have to do. I told y'all, start talking to y'all kids about being firemen. Start talking to y'all kids about being policemen. Start talking to y'all kids about, about running for office. Start talking to y'all kids about being doctors and lawyers. Otherwise, we are done. Done. Uh, the brother, Dr. Uh, Boyce Watkins, uh, look up uh, my brother, our, our elder and ancestor, WB Du Bois, he talked about a 100-year plan. We better get on that 100-year plan because our ass is out like a let-out couch if we don't. Now, get y'all the perfect example. Liz Cheney. Dick Cheney, former vice president Dick Cheney. Dude, who, who damn near, he looks like the villain. The last two well, before, what well, happened? The last three vice presidents look like damn Bond villains. They look like the evil guy in the Lethal Weapon or the Bond movie. And, uh, that's what they look like, for real, for real, for real, for real. So, Dick Cheney's daughter, she was rolling with 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 the Donald the whole get down. Ninety eight percent of the time, she rolled with him. <clears throat> when he jumped out the window, she said enough. And guess what? They they unseated her to show you how wicked this crew crew of people are. And don't get me wrong, because guess what? One of the best people I've met in recent times on a man dog. You he in here as a uh, uh, Queens three and King. One of the best people I met. But guess what? If he wasn't super dope like he is, I would want to rock with him. And if he ever started jumping out the window talking crazy, I'm not gonna want to rock with him, and he wouldn't want to rock with me the same way, right? So how is it that you got friends? See, I got friends who racist. I ain't got no racist friends. I ain't got no Trump supporting friends. I ain't got no uh, anti-LGBTQ friends. I ain't got no anti-abortion friends. My crew, the people that I rock with, live and let live. That's how we live. If it, Guess what? I don't like abortions. Don't get one. I don't like gays. Don't blow a dude. Don't kiss a woman. Whatever your view on that is, don't do it. And guess what? It will not affect you. But Liz Cheney stood up against Trump. Show you how wicked these people are. It's this guy who's a, who's a senator named Matt Gates. Matt Gates has been suspected of having sex with a 17-year-old. Paying her for sex. And they still rocking with him. But they didn't kick Liz Cheney out to get down because she ain't rolling with the foolishness, foolishness and the madness. But hey, they really they, you got the the, the, the uh, conservative brothers, and there ain't nothing wrong with being a conservative. Guess what? News flash, another news flash. Most black people are conservatives, but they've never taken the time to get to know us. They just know us as fried chicken dancing and all the madness. But we mostly are conservative. Most black people don't do nothing but rock with Jesus. Most black people ain't really with the abortion get down. We can help you with that, baby. 
Most black people do all the stuff conservatives do besides be racist and hate people. And guess what? Here's another thing. Black people don't hate each other. We don't hate ourselves like that. You know what we don't what, know what we do? We buy into nonsense and propaganda and get tricked into it. And then it makes it seem because it's clear that that's not for us. And it makes it seem like we hate each other. My man, Brady Kell, just posted something. You're right on it. Uh, we need to create our own system of finance, politics and po uh, politics and policing. Thank you, Brady Kell. It's always good to see your name pop up, my good brother. Whether it be the phone or in the chat room. But these are the things that we need to do, y'all, because they are they are ramping up to put your black ass back in bondage. I'm just telling you, and it ain't no good people. Look, I told y'all, man, the good people are not on the other side, and they're not pretending to be on your side. The last time I checked, good people do something that I did. I did this about five years ago. I'm not even calling myself a good person, but. I saw us older, I uh, saw one of our elders, and she was trying to cross the street. And none of these jackasses would allow this elderly woman to just walk through the intersection. She was at the corner, she'd get out there, and they boom, boom, they just kept going. So I parked my car, got out, and helped her cross the street. Because she wasn't going to get across without me. The reason I brought that up is this. We continue to say the, the Republicans and the Democrats keep saying we'll help you. We'll help you. See, you need to do this. And ain't nobody helped us do nothing. And the people are not racist. But you still you rock with racists. I ain't got no people around me that hate nobody. And if you got people around you that hate people, you will hate manga too. Oh, see, it's cool to have a different difference in the view. It is. But if your view got anything to do with hate, destruction, oppression, Discrimination, I ain't rocking with you. And if you catch people rocking with people like that, oh, so we must have a bipartisan system, so it'll work. Uh, uh, everybody must work together. No, they don't. Because you just saw for the last four years when you and when you at the top and you the chief, you get things done. Joe Biden, when is that uh crime bill gonna pass? When is that John Lewis anti lynching bill gonna pass? It's been on uh Capitol Hill since 1986. But but you got our back, right, Joe? Right. With your stuttering ass. Yep. I'm taking shots. I'm Kwame Browning. This uh hashtag Kwame in. Another thing. Got into a conversation recently. You know what? I'm gonna do this black history thing. Do this black history thing, and then I'm gonna come back about that conversation. Because the show today is gonna be a little uh shortened. Cause I got to pick up my little sister from the airport. So uh, I'm going to get everything in. It's just not going to be as long as it normally is. I'll let you know so the idea that Africans or black people were in the Americas before Columbus sometimes points to the legend of Queen Calafia as evidence. However, most people are aware that her story derives from a Spanish novel. Her legend is very entertaining, but what I find interesting are the rumors about her myth being the origin of the name California. What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And if you'd like to support the Home Team these videos and future animated projects, what about me? Do so on Patreon.com. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can gain resources and illustrative infographics on African history. All links are in the description box below. The legends of the Amazons have intrigued many novelists and young impressionable minds. The existence of the Daomi Amazons and their exploits were the inspiration for the Dora Milaje and Marvel's Black Panther. Ancient Greek historians have even spoken about legends concerning African Amazons. So it's no surprise that a 16th century novelist decided to use these myths and legends to write his own story. Queen Calafia was mentioned in a Spanish romantic novel, La Sergas de Esplendid, or The Exploits of Esplendid. The story was about an attack on Christians who lived in the Turkish capital of Constantinople. During the battle, Queen Calafia helped the attacking forces. She was described as a warrior queen who came from a place called California. According to the California African American Heritage Preservation and Restoration Society, Queen Calafia is common knowledge among professors of medieval literature. The myth of Queen Calafia used to be a sort of secret code among poets and sexual rebels 
at least until the secret went public in 2001 during the renovation of Disneyland. One addition to Disneyland called California Adventure lies a theater decorated with a mural depicting Calafia. Inside, there's a brief widescreen film called Golden Dreams with the voice of Whoopi Goldberg as Calafia, the queen of California. After her exposure to the world, this mythical black queen became a sort of symbol for the newly multicultural California. The Spanish romance novel The Exploits of Expandian was published in 1510 by Garcia Rodriguez de Mandavo. He wrote it after his tremendously popular Amadis of Gaul. Montavo gives us details about the queen. Know that on the right hand of the Indies exists an island called California, very close to a side of the earthly paradise, and it was populated by black women, without any man existing there, because they lived in the way of the Amazons. They had beautiful and robust bodies, and were brave and very strong. Their island was the strongest of the world, with its steep cliffs and rocky shores. Their weapons were golden, and so were the harnesses of the wild beasts that they were accustomed to taming, so that they could be ridden, because there was no other metal in the island than gold. In his book, Montavo tells us that Queen Calafia helped the Muslims when Constantinople was being attacked. She raised an army with a large fleet of black women riding on griffins. In the novel, Queen Calafia is captured by the Christians and converts to Christianity. She then goes on to marry a cousin of Esplendian and returns with her army to California. Now, the thing that brings the legend of Queen Calafia into reality is her influence on the name of California itself. A Spanish conquistador named Hernan Cortes explored the northwestern part of Mexico in 1536 and discovered the California Peninsula. Apparently, Cortes was a fan of romance novels and got his hands on Montavo's book about Queen Calafia. In his novel, Montavo mentions that one of the precious stones on the Queen's island were pearls, and legend has it that Cortes found pearls during his expedition. Believing that he had discovered Calafia's island, he named it California in her honor. Now, an expedition Cortez ordered just three years later proved that the so-called island was actually a peninsula, but the name California remained. Now, even though it's mostly a legend, many people agree that the state of California was indeed named after the Queen Calafia legend. But there are some who still subscribe to the term Calita Fornax or Hot Furnace as the origin of the name California. Regardless, her importance as a symbol for the spirit of California is undeniable. Queen Calafia continues to be depicted as a spirit of California in modern-day sculpture, paintings, stories, and films. There's even a remarkable panel of the Black Queen with her Amazons at the Mark Hopkins Intercontinental Hotel in San Francisco. There is absolutely no denying her influence. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and would like to help out in its continued production, please consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to tune in. This is H Rap B from Built for This Network. And you are tuning in currently to the End of the Bench podcast, a simulcast every Tuesday, every Saturday, 5 p.m. Such a standard time. Simulcast on Built for This Network and on YouTube, the end of the bench.com. Now, as I was stating, we keep buying into the nonsense that people are trying to be fair with us. They're not. They're not. Just because you got cool people from other cultures, understand. They're not trying to be our friends. Because you know what? You don't allow people to create rules and circumstances to hurt your friends. Because you don't allow people to bury history like you just saw. You don't allow people to say things about your friends and family members because you know what it's plenty of people out here that i've had disagreements with and you're not and if you don't care like me and my man big Illinois, been rocking since the early 80s maybe like 80 we about we about 40 years in in about six months right me and my man you're not about to say nothing i don't give a damn if big Illinois walk up to me and punch me in the center of my face and we stop talking for the next five years tell you what run up on them Wherever I'm at, 
we stomping you out and then we still going to walk away and not talk. That's what a friend is. We ain't got to be hanging out every day, but you're not going to say nothing bad about him. You're not going to create nothing about him or none of that and let me stand there and watch. So the people who pretend to be our friends, no matter if you're liberal or if you're this, if you're that or whatever, and you ain't helping, you hurt me. And if, hey, hey, these ain't even H-Rap words. These Dr. King words. My worry is not for my racist white supremacists. It's for my liberal brothers and sisters that don't do nothing. So if you think I'm saying this, I'm not the first. You know, you ain't got to respect me, but I know most of y'all respect Dr. Reverend Dr. King. Martin Luther King Jr. I know y'all respect him. So you ain't got to you ain't got to grow with me. Use the ancestors, let them elevate your state of being, and then we can move forward, right? There you go. Now, I got into this conversation recently as I was stating before the break about accountability. See, uh this the accountability thing. And everybody wants Black folks to be accountable for their behavior, but don't nobody want to hold black folks, hold the people who put black folks in these trick bags accountable for their behavior. Oh, see, see, you morally bankrupt if you sell drugs and do crime. Well, aren't you morally bankrupt if you remove all the uh, uh, ability, for, remove a lot of my ability to enhance my life? If you remove vocation from all my schools, if you underfund my schools purposely, if you put me in a situation to where as my in my mind, even though it may not be true, but in my mind, crime is the only way to go. Where's your moral responsibility at? Where's that? Why well, ain't nobody paying attention to that? But see, we quick to nail each other to the cross. Perfect example. I'm watching one of my favorite shows recently. And this ain't even on my paper. This is right out of my head. I'm watching one of my favorite shows recently. Two weeks in a row. First week. It was this. It was a brother in Oklahoma had a marijuana dispensary. His paperwork. This is the, a story that mainstream media gave initially. His paperwork had lapsed for a year. Somebody came into his dispensary, tried to rob him. He killed the dude. And now he's up for life in prison. Even the guys on the panel were like, well, if he didn't keep his paperwork up, see, that's his business. And he and they, and they went right into that moral high ground. The next week, seven days later, on the same show, they had this thing where these two cops are chasing this dog who just bit a man onto a man's property in Texas. He used the castle doctrine. The castle doctrine is if somebody come on your property and being aggressive with you, you can kill him. This man killed two cops. And they was like, well, the castle doctrine, they explaining why the white dude was right. But lo and behold, they found out that the county, the, the, in his state paperwork, was legal. The city council had threw a monkey wrench in it. And that's why he was illegal. They didn't announce it. They just threw a monkey wrench in it. This is what I'm saying. You're going to make... Now, the only story you put out is his paperwork was bogus. You didn't put out that these people plotted against probably the small business, man. See, the thing is, the small business, man, is not representative of the black man. But the black man get raped when you rape the small business, man. He get raped first. When it's a gang of people that line up behind the small business, man, to take him out, the black man get it first. He get, in, he get penetrated first. That's why I make it, oh, the black man, y'all always out to get us. We get it first. And then they trickle down, and that's how they got the people in Germany. They they, they broke it all the way down. And, oh, by the way, there's some people that are like, this in Germany, too, part of the Holocaust. Nobody really talks about that. Because y y your ass don't want to open a book. But these are the things that we must remove from our mind. Like, watch this. I'll give y'all an exercise. Don't nobody, you can be honest and put it in the chat room if you like. When I say drive by shooting, which community comes to mind first? What does the person look like that's in the drive by shooting first? More than likely, it's somebody that's from my community. If, let's, if we're going to be honest, you think drive by shooting, you think Crip Blood, blah, blah, and brothers, and yada, 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 right? But why ain't nobody think about Al Capone and Bugsy Siegel and, 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 and Bones Malone and all those dudes from the 20s, 100 years ago who was doing drive-by shoots? Because they brainwash you into thinking 
you, crime is synonymous with age rap. If you look like him, you might be a criminal. I even had a guy, I heard a guy say, we're the only community that embraces crime and wrongdoing. Anybody ever heard about this guy named, uh, let's just go back. Anybody ever heard of Sam Giancana in Chicago? Yes, you have. He's one of the biggest mobsters ever. Yep, he, he allegedly helped John F. Kennedy win the election. Anybody ever heard of Al Capone, Frank Nitti, uh, 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 Lucky Luciano, Charlie Luciano, uh, 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 my man Gambino? Did, uh, did, did anybody ever see? Did anybody see Goodfellas? And, uh, does anybody know who Seventy, 70 Bull Gravano is? How do we know these people? And they're criminals and they're celebrated. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Anybody know who Jack Kennedy is? Anybody know his daddy, bootlegger? But they're holy now. Exactly. So when you, when you try to put this on my people. You're not going to hang this on our head no more. Not, not if I got breath in my lungs. So, miss me with the nonsense. We're not going for that anymore. Another reason. Study came out this week. 37-page study. Black men convicted of murder. Two brothers. Two brothers were convicted of murder. Special needs brothers. Convicted of murder 30 years ago. will get $30 million plus additional compensation. $30 million because it was found out that they didn't do it. Do y'all know if you black, you got a 51% higher chance of being convicted of a murder. 41% of black men convicted of murder in the United States of America. Thank you, brothers. Uh, 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 ready to care of my man, dog. 41% of black men convicted of murder in the United States of America are not guilty. And people telling me about moral high ground. Moral high ground. How about, how about this? Black laws. Does anybody know what a black law is? A black law is laws that were created after our people, after our, after our ancestors were let out of bondage 158 years ago. Get this. Get this. If you are loitering, matter of fact, loitering is illegal. If you're loitering and you're black, because the 14th Amendment say slavery is illegal unless you're convicted of a crime. It don't say, see, you, you automatically think unless you're convicted of a crime, you're thinking a big time drug dealer, murderer, killer, rapist. I'm cool, right? That's what you're thinking. No. A crime is jaywalking. A crime is is loitering, which they made illegal. So I'm going to move you, I'm going to kick you off the plantation that I forced you to be on for the last 200 years. And now if I catch you standing around, you go to jail so I can rent you out to farmers for free. Uh, here's another one. Because they were afraid of people like my uh, cousin and uh, uh, Nat Turner uh, uh, and Demar Vesey Third, then by Vesey got 3,800 enslaved Africans to go. Your ancestors, my ancestors, our cousins, uncles, nieces, nephews, every, our family members. 3,800, largest slave, enslaved revolt in the history of the country. And they was going to send the deck up. Oh, by the way, the same dude who created that church that Dylan Roof shot up. And just so having Dylan Roof shot it up the day before the anniversary of, the, uh, of that insurrection, that, that, that uh Foiled insurrection got somebody snitched. So you think Dylan Roof just, oh, he's just a crazy white boy who didn't no, no. It was the day before the damn anniversary. That was that was a plot. But you didn't know that. You ain't tell you that on TV, did you? So you can create these laws so our ancestors will be incarcerated so they can be re-enslaved. But people want to tell me about a more high ground. Then people want to say, why are you committing crime? Because uh Oh, who? Why would you poison your people? Like the people who were selling. Look, it's crack bad. Yeah. Get, why we know it's bad? Did we know it was bad in 1985? I bet you I didn't know it was, I was. I was five years old in 1985. I was six years old. I mean, uh, 15 years old in 1985. I was 16 years old in 1986. And I was watching this program uh, hosted by this uh, media guy named Hugh Downs. It was called 2020 on uh, ABC on Friday nights. And I saw another program on 60 Minutes that's still on uh, CBS to this very day. 
two of the biggest shows, two of the biggest news shows in the history of TV at that time, and one of them is still on TV. This new social drug is it's the rave of the country. Crack. It's called crack. I saw rich white people using crack on that. Don't don't believe me. Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. New social drug 1985. Crack. 60 minutes 2020. So, how the hell were the young people of the community supposed to know that this is going to destroy you? They just thought they had the inroads in it. Because if you're old enough, if you're old as me, or if you if you were born between 1975 going back, cocaine was a rich man drug, a.k.a. a white man's drug. So if you got access to the white man drug, you might come up like white people. You can, you can get it to them, and you can get it to other people, you can come up. That's the, main, the mindset of people. And guess what? Well, why didn't they stop when they saw all the destruction? Because then nobody want to go back to poverty, dumbass. James Evans said it on Good Time one time. Him and Florida was arguing, and James Evans said something that was profound as all outdoors. He said, Florida, if you make a list of things that people want to be, they're at the very bottom. This were the last three things you'll see. Poor, sick, and dead. And guess what? If you poor and get sick, you're going to die. So stop judging people on situations with hindsight. Yeah, everybody who will ever hear this program can look back at a decision that they made and understand that that was the wrong decision. But I can't judge you on that because we all make mistakes. Now, hey, it's this one guy y'all might heard of. Him. His name is Jesus. Yet he who has not seen cast the first stone, he who has not made a mistake, you can be the judge. Have you made egregious mistakes? Probably not. But guess what? Hey. When the miss meal cramps hit your stomach, you never know what you would do. So I ain't got no heaven to hell to put my brothers and sisters in who participated in the drug trade because they were impoverished. When you got people 20 years later like Kwame Brown walk around without no shoes and I got a way to do this and I don't know it's going to destroy the community so just go to hell. Now, <coughs> stop Referencing the way you were raised. That sounds horrible. Hey man, I was raised like this, so it was right. A lot of our parents, even though we agree with the tactics, whipping your ass might not be the best tactic. A whipping might not be the best tactic. Yelling and screaming might not be the best tactic. Was your parents wrong? Hell no. Because a lot of us got the mass whippers and we became, we excel. But guess what? What if our parents would have sat down and talked to us and explained to us other opportunities, other other ways of knowing the mistakes that, you know, you know, so we pass that trauma down. Because what that is, a whipping is passing down trauma. When you are told to go get the switch, that's like standing in front of the world watching somebody get a beating. See, we don't even realize that we're hurt that way. Am I totally against spankings? No, 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 no. Sometimes we might have to get tightened up, but maybe just maybe we start talking to our kids more, interacting verbally with our kids, explaining to our kids what's in front of them instead of whoop your ass. Maybe I'm just saying, see, we have to come up with a better way because we're dealing with trauma. brothers and sisters. I'm dealing with it. I assume that you guys are dealing with it, too. And our brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, they're dealing with it as well. Dr. Uh, Francis Scott, Francis Cress Welsey. Dr. Joyce DeGruy, look him up, please. Joyce DeGruy talks about this thing called post-traumatic slave syndrome. She talks about how black women were, if, like, I don't know Dolph's history. I don't know Reddy Cab's history. And I know mine. But because we talk a lot, I bet you. We were, we were rambunctious and running around. And, blah, 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 blah. and because the reason I use them and not brothers from the city because I'm a dude from the city, and they dudes from different parts of the country. My man D. Great, listen, he the same way. If we were 150 years, 170 years younger than we are, which will put us smack dab into enslavement, and we were the same personalities running around, da, 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 our mothers would be like, hey, 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 calm down, calm down, because if we had too much energy, we could potentially get killed. Or They'll say, hey, hey, we can get him to do something else. And he would take that baby from you. So they had to calm us down. Now, 
we still suffer from that because you got sisters who will go, they had their kids at an interracial school, ready to care, dog, age, rap, degrade. And we'll get the Excel in our mother go, hey, they still, oh, Demarcus is doing good. Ivan is doing well. Kevin is doing great. Brian's doing good. And our mother go, oh, slow down. Don't worry about it. You keep it moving, white lady. That's trauma. That's trauma that is embedded in us. Because now I don't want you trying to touch my kid. I don't want you trying to inculcate your traditions into my child. We're suffering that way. So what we're going to do is come together. We're going to come up with a way to celebrate our kids outwardly. We're going to not physically punish our kids unless it's an extreme situation. And we're going to start talking to our kids about our past so they'll never forget. So well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with a different way of knowing. Shout out to Dr. Uh, uh, Greg Carr. Another way of knowing. The best way to do this, y'all, is understand some of our history. Nature is equivalent to the Egyptian word natural. That means the way of doing things, the natural course of events. See, we are not an evil group of people. We're not a hateful group of people. We're not a destructive group of people. We're not here to destroy each other nor nobody else on this planet. We've been the, we've been the educators, we've been the teachers, we've been the enlighteners the whole time. We're gonna go back to that. We're gonna educate each other. We're gonna enlighten each other, and we're gonna show each other different ways of knowing things like voodoo. It's voodoo first and foremost. And if you don't believe in it, all you do is open up that book, and you find out that voodoo is a tool used by our ancestors. See. H-Rap going to continue to learn. And H-Rap going to share with his brothers and sisters. And we're going to become all powerful. And we're going to show the people who are wicked and evil how to control this so everybody can eat. We're going to cut this power and everybody going to get their slice. We eating first. I'm just letting you know. We eating first. But I'm going to tell you this. Now, I'm going to do this Kwame Brown thing. And then I'm going to say one thing. And then I'm out. Our brother, Kwame Brown, I started off the show talking about how I'm retired from talking about sports. I'm not talking about sports no more. Not that I hate sports. I'm still going to watch the Super Bowl and watch, catch an occasional game, but I'm not going to watch sports like I used to. It's just not at me anymore. Maybe in about five years, I, I get the hunger or the thirst again, and then I'll be sports guy again. But up until and included that moment, I'm not going to do it. My brother Kwame Brown exposed mass media this week. You had a lot of people, you know, you this brother on here, he yelling. He was he was he was profane. He was a he was in attack mode. And a lot of people, because we've been it's this dude that used to be on uh, Sports Talk Radio here in Chicago. He was uh, he, I think he is a white uh, he's a suspected white supremacist by me. But he's he had he used this term um the pussification of the world. The pussification of the world makes us feel like Kwame Brown. Is uh, out of order. First and foremost, I want to talk to one thing about Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown was 20 years ago, was an 18, 19 year old young brother, a basketball player, a straight A student. Excellent guy, man. He was drafted in the National Basketball Association. And it was a plan that was 40. There are two problems with this entire situation that I don't like. The first one is our young brother Kwame Brown has been the the the, uh, the the uh the bullet point for jokes for the last twenty five years. I mean twenty years. He has been a synonym for scrub, buster, stain, Woodrow, clam, right? Which is wrong. I'm here to tell y'all that young brother Kwame Brown was not a bust. Did he live up to uh his physical attributes? No, he did not. No, he did not. He was a two hundred and seventy pound, seven foot tall, young eighteen year old man. Did he get the prerequisite uh, uh, coaching and training? Probably not. But what I will do is this. This is why I stopped talking about sports. Because we don't talk about sports. We talk about numbers. I hate to do this to my young brother, Steph Curry. Steph Curry is the greatest, one of the greatest basketball players ever. Look at his stats. Well, one of the greatest basketball players in the world would have won that game last night. Gary Payton. Jason Kidd. Uh, Isaiah Thomas. 
um, countless point guards would have willed his would have put his team in position. See, because if he's not if he's not on point offensively, or he's not doing a Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan impersonation, scoring fifty to eighty points, then he's been limited. He's the com- He's what you know as a combo guard. He might be. Let's just say he's the number one and number two combo guards. Ever Allen Iverson being either number one or number two, it's, it's up for conversation. But Kwame Brown did things on the basketball court right. Otherwise, coaches wouldn't have. Let him play. How many busters, scrubs, Rudy Poots, Cranks, Marks, or whatever you want to call them? How many of those dudes play 12 years in the league? Anthony Bennett, as he referenced, didn't play that long. Joe Wolf didn't play that long. I can, hey, I got all this stuff in my head. I can go down there, chapter book and verse of stains that were picked early in the draft that we never heard of again. But guess what? Some of those dudes. None of those dudes played 12, 13 years in the league and started most of those most of that time. See, we keep looking at the number. Oh, he didn't get this many rebounds because he's seven feet tall. I agree. But this is when you know people are full of caca. Okay? When you saying, hey, H Rap ain't that good. Well, what you mean? H Rap got a pretty good show. He ain't no Larry King. Well, who is Larry? Who is like Larry? He ain't no Howard Stern. He ain't no Tom Joyner. Well, they the best ever. So how could he be that? He might be one day, but he ain't that. See, what well, if you want to say, well, he ain't no, well, no, he good as that guy. You see what I'm saying? Don't compare me to Michael Jordan. Else I'm always going to fall short. Oh, he's seven feet tall. He ain't no Kim Olajuwon. He ain't Will Chamberlain. He ain't a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Well, who is? Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Kim Olajuwon, and Shaq. That's what they. That's it. Moses Malone. He ain't that. Compare me to, to some contemporaries. Because, see, he was the first player pick, which means the system is flawed. But that don't make him a scrub, buster, Rudy Poole, bum. He just didn't live up to expectations. Because I don't know any scrub, busters, Rudy Poole, bums that got as many minutes as he got and played as many years. I just don't know what that dude is. But y'all let y'all let these people tell y'all that these people aren't who we think they are, and we laugh at them and we call them names and, and it's a ha 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 and everybody laughing. But they're really laughing at us. I go on man will see the building. One fourth. Well, wait, it's three four, three quarters of the uh 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 forecast of the building, much love. Cheers. And I'm not taking for Kwame, taking up for Kwame Brown, but what I am doing is taking up or uh, uh, supporting that brother. Because Kwame Brown took a shot. He took start shooting back. And then people who knew he was right, they gracefully bowed out. My man Stax Jackson, he gracefully bowed out. Shout out to Jalen Rose, because I was watching the show when he took, stuck up for Kwame Brown 10 years ago. Uh, he, he is a buster. Well, as Kwame Brown said, how are you going to call me something and I can do something? I can do what you criticize me for better than you ever wanted to. When you think about it like this, man, for 13 years, Kwame Brown's one of the top 450 or 480 basketball players. He was in the top 500 for 15 years. Think about that. You It's 7 billion people in the world. It ain't, but, it ain't, it ain't but 600 people in the world better than you at this. I'll take it. I take it. Now, for like me and one of my homeboys got into a debate about the whole, you know, he he shut down Matt Bond. I don't like the way he kicked Matt Bonds in the face, but guess what? Matt, you should have just gracefully bowed out. Stax Jackson. I didn't like the way he did it. I mean, I didn't like that he had to assassinate two brothers, but hey, y'all been assassinating this young brother for 20 years. 20 years. And y'all don't make fun of white people. Because I guarantee y'all, I've, I've been saying this for three years. People who've been knowing me in regards to this speaker, I've been saying it for three years. People who've been knowing me in regards to Bill for the, uh, the end of the bench, I've been saying it for five years on air. Why is it that the brothers always highlighted as the bums? Uh, Kwame Brown played for 13 years. How many years Adam Morrison played? Bum! Where's Joy, uh, uh, what's uh, Doug McDermott? Where he at? Where he at? He's stealing. Joe Wolf, stealing. 
Tom Gugliotta was still it. They played good for three or four years and they gracefully bowed. Craig Elo, Steve Kerr, still it, still it. Chris Corciani, still it. So, miss me with that. You know what I'm saying? And then, one of my homeboys, good brother, we got into a little debate about Charlemagne the God. See, Charlemagne the God was taught the hard way. Hey, man, stay out of crown people business. Because he jumped in that young brother Kwame Brown's business and Kwame Brown aired him out. Aired his ass out. And I'm glad he did it. Because guess what? Everybody, well, you know how Charlemagne is. You know what? When you accept Charlemagne the God trying to destroy this man's name and say that's how he is, that means we've accepted bull. We've accepted trash as acceptable behavior. And that's not a, a, appropriate. He was not warning any about anybody about Kwame Brown. Because guess what? I got an uncle, God rest his soul, who helped start one of the largest street gangs in, in, in America. It started here in Chicago. Do you affiliate him with me? No, you don't. I got cousins who are in that street gang. Do you affiliate them with me? No, you don't, because I'm my own individual. Charlamagne, you talked about how your father a crackhead. Are you a crackhead? Huh? Or he used to smoke crack. Did you used to smoke crack? Is that why you tell on your father? See, now, what you were trying to do is exactly what that young brother Kwame Brown said. That he said, they're going to try to destroy my character, and if they can't, they're going to involve my family. A lot of us have a father with kids. Those are Kwame Brown's father's kids. That has nothing to do with Mr. Brown. And when Charlamagne the God of Jameel Hill tried to come to the rescue of white supremacy and bury Kwame, he was astute enough to bury both of them. And the reason I bring this up is because we need to stop calling these dudes scrubs, busters, and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, you can say he didn't play well and leave it there. Because I'll see a bunch of white guys talking about Ryan Leaf, who stained out the league and then went to jail, to, went to the penitentiary twice, one for breaking in and, and, and using drugs and others for just using drugs. I don't hear nobody talk about him. Has anybody said uh, 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 the dude who used to play quarterback for the Washington Redskins, Heath something, or, or Tim Couch in the last 10 years? No, you haven't. And they were... They were garbage truck juice. They stunk so bad. But Kwame Brown and Jamarcus Russell. You know me scrub ass what? Well, Rick Mine, way in. Anybody know anybody from the Jets outside of uh, uh, that one boy from Marshall University who tore up his jump? Pendleton, Chad Pendleton, Todd Pendleton. Anybody but him that played for the Jets and Kenny O'Brien in the last 25 years that it's been worth a thousand cookies? But Jamarcus Russell is the poster boy for Scrub. Why do brothers get the label bust and the white boys just go off and they just be white boys? We got to stop it, folks. We got to stop it. And at this point, I got to stop it. I want y'all to understand, man, my goal is to fix us. I don't care if you come up with an idea. I'm going to send you a link and you're going to be right here next to me. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get it fixed. I ain't trying to be the star. I just wanted to get done. And I, like, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I got to go pick up my sister from the airport. Her plane landed 15 minutes ago, and I'm 45 minutes away from the airport. That. But um, I want y'all to understand, man, I got nothing but love for my people. I got nothing but love for y'all. I want to send a shout out to Karen Hunter, Dr. Greg Carr, uh, uh, Joe Madison, Heath Shuler. Thank you. Heath Shuler. Thank you, dog. Uh, Dr. Greg Carr, Joe Madison. Laree Daniel Favors, Clay Kane, Heather B, Al Shopton. I want to send a big shout out to uh, Craig Fax and all the brothers on there. I send a shout out to Zo Williams, uh, Corey Holcomb, uh, 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 what's the boy name? Ray Grady, uh, uh, the African Diaspora Channel, uh, um, Talib Kweli, my man Nori, DJ uh, uh, EFN, and anybody else I draw. Uh, 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 inspiration from and all y'all man tune in to the uh, uh, podcast Monday uh, this dopest podcast in the history of the universe is called Forecast me my man Wilkes Dog and our captain Ben from BS Street Sports and I want y'all to remember something that Malcolm X said 
when you remove the I from your conversation and make it we, you make illness, the illness that we have, and turn it into wellness. When you take that I and replace it with a we, you make illness to wellness. And don't forget, don't get mad because you can't do it like can. Like when Jordan went up and took that shot and switched hand. Don't get mad because you're not me. I'm the freaking poster boy and I'm H Rap B.